Welcome to Positive TV's News Roundup, the programme that aims to be the antidote to the traditional negative news agenda. I'm Dana Amaday and this week I'm bringing you more positive news stories from around the world. First off in this week's show, how to cut carbon emissions at the flick of a switch. A report from the Grantham Institute for Climate Change at the Imperial College says that carbon emissions can be cut by up to a third by using simple measures like turning off appliances at the mains and installing energy-saving light bulbs. Whilst these discoveries are nothing new, the college emphasises that the governments have vastly underestimated the potential savings from encouraging people to use less energy. These simple lifestyle changes are up to 60% more effective in cutting electricity consumption and have the same effect as taking 10 large gas-powered fire stations out of operation. Environmental campaigners hope that these findings will increase the government's public awareness on energy saving and lead to a ban on standby switches on appliances. Next, solar panels. They may be clean and green in terms of energy, but how clean are they in their ethics? A new report from the Ethical Consumer magazine looked at the environmental and ethical policies of companies producing and fitting solar panels. As well as reviewing their use of toxic and hazardous materials and pollution records, the report found that some of the biggest manufacturers of solar panels were companies with poor ethical track records like BP and Sanio. Others had associations or direct links to unethical industries such as the arms trade or sweat labour factories. The magazine is keen to point out that not all companies flying the green flag are as socially and environmentally committed as the consumers they're supplying to. By carrying out surveys such as this, Ethical Consumer magazine is keen that buyers make an informed choice as possible when trying to do the right thing. And now to consumer pressure success story. International bank HSBC has sold its share in Sinar Mass, Indonesia's largest conglomerate and producer of paper and palm oil, and directly involved in deforestation in Indonesia. Greenpeace led an online campaign resulting in 10,000 emails being sent to the HSBC, deploring the practice and their investment therein. Nestle has also announced it intends to remove Sinar Mass projects from its supply chain, as well as Tesco's own brand paper products. Greenpeace has been talking to HSBC about their involvement in Sinar Mass for some time. It is clear the mass petition helped tip the balance of the decision for the banks that seeks to be the world's local and global bank. Greenpeace will now turn their attention on other cinema investors, such as USB and Credit Suisse. Staying with consumer success, students say no to Nike sweatshops. A student consumer campaign that started at the University of Wisconsin has spread to 186 other universities and has persuaded sports giant Nike to reconsider its commitments to workers in subcontracted companies. Over the years, developing countries have taken a number of measures to implement regulations protecting factory workers and holding corporations like Nike responsible for the welfare and workers in their factories abroad. However, many big fashion labels including Nike have found a loophole and avoided prosecution by subcontracting the manufacture of their clothes and shoes to private factories that were not bound to take care of their workers. Many of the unprotected workers will work 80 hours a week for as little as 7 pence an hour. They fall ill through the lack of rest and proper breaks and continue to work for fear of losing their jobs. In some countries, children as young as 10 work with dangerous machinery and hazardous chemicals to make garments. At $400 billion a year, the fashion industry is the fourth largest industry in the world and continues to see its profits rise year on year. Nike was under fire for not helping Honduran workers laid off when two Nike subcontractors closed their factories. Following the threats that their garments will be removed from colleges, sports, leisure centres and retail outlets throughout the United States and further afield, Nike agreed to set up a 1.54 million relief fund as well as vocational training and health cover for workers laid off by the two subcontractors. And finally, we are delighted to tell you about Polly Higgins' new book, Eradicating Ecocide, Laws and the Governance to Prevent the Destruction of Our Planet. Bianca Jagger, founder of the Chair of Bianca Jagger Human Rights Foundation, said, At this critical juncture in history, it is vital that we set out global standards and accountability for corporations. Polly has illustrated how this can be achieved in her invaluable new book. The book is now available in all good bookshops. 
So that's it for Positive TV News Roundup. Remember, you can get more details of any of the stories featured in this bulletin and much more on our website at www.positivetv.tv. So until next week, bye for now.